Hello everyone, my name is Marco Pajalic and I want to welcome you today and thank you for joining us for our third Community of Practice webinar. Our first webinar in the series discussed how to manage fear and anger at public engagement events. And our second session provided an introduction to online and digital engagement as it pertains to public participation. And as promised, uh, we are following up today on our second webinar with a more focused look at how online engagement uh, tools and uh, support public participation. And we'll include a couple of case studies as well. Today's webinar is on how PlaySpeak supports and advances online publication uh, consultations. Pardon me. And with us here today is the founder and CEO of PlaySpeak, Colleen Neistat. She'll present the rationale for developing and using tools like PlaySpeak and will provide a general overview of how it works, followed by a closer look at a couple of case studies. Colleen has a degree in urban geography from UBC, is an accomplished entrepreneur, and currently sits on a Vancouver Mayor's Task Force on Housing Affordability. Previously, Colleen was on a City of Vancouver's Development Permit Advisory Panel, and PlaySpeak has been used by organizations and municipalities across British Columbia region including the town of Gibsons and the district of Tofino. And the list grows, including as far east as Winnipeg, and as of tomorrow, the Northwest Territories. Now, a couple of house rules before we get started. Everyone here today is muted except myself and Colleen. To ask a question, please either raise your hand using the control panel or type in the questions in the question pane at the bottom of the control panel. And please save your questions for after the first part of the presentation. Uh, at that time, we'll break into the question period, which will follow up by uh, another session on covering a couple of case studies, and then we'll spend another 10 minutes on any follow-up questions at that point. And uh, following our webinar, we'll also send out a brief survey to get your feedback on this webinar and where you would, where, what you would like us uh, to cover in the future as well. Now I'd like you to introduce you to Colleen to start off her presentation. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you very much, Marco, and uh, welcome, uh, good morning uh, for everyone that's on the west of the country. Um, as Marco said, I'm going to go at a high level of a broad overview and look at the rationale first to describe some of the challenges, um, show how what we're doing with, with PlaySpeak will complement other methods and finally, look at some individual case studies. So um, I'll start off with a refresher on the problem. This is my favorite slide. Um, makes me laugh, but it's not really that funny, because as we're holding uh, traditional public meetings, uh, they tend to digress into gong shows and, and attract NIMBYs and the more ideological than average. So we, we know that it intimidates a lot of people. They don't want to go out in person, so they're going to be inclined to be able to participate online. Now, unfortunately, um, with online consultation to date, whether that's been using social media or a variety of different mechanisms, has, has been anonymous, uh, largely because of privacy concerns. But uh, my joke here, anonymity breeds contempt, is not, again, that funny because we find ourselves uh, fending off troll attacks. And there's many examples um, in the city of Vancouver, and I'm sure everyone on the line has their experience with disruptors, or people gaming the system where they are, uh, you know, for example, you'll have 1,500 responses and discover that 1,200 are from the same person. So, what we're trying to, to do is to, to make online consultation real. And it is really revolving around a set of core principles, uh, most importantly, in generating real hard evidence to support decision making and public policy development. So we, as we've developed this platform, we've done it um, using the framework set out in the IAP2 spectrum of public impact, which is there in the, the right bottom of the slide, um, using those principles, but also being able to authenticate data. Another way to think about it is as a, a participatory GIS feedback system that's geosocial. But in any event, 
what it's doing is it's generating geographically specific data that can be verified and is defensible in terms of, of supporting the uh, public, public policy process. Now, challenges. The biggest single challenge is online privacy. People uh, are remiss to put their address, for example, online because of fears mostly that they're going to be marketed to. When they're dealing with sites like Google or Facebook, for example, those kinds of sites make their money. Their, their revenue drivers are advertising. And so I think people quite rightly are concerned about providing address information. But what we've been doing with PlaySpeak, uh, I like to joke, is separating church from state. The system verifies people's addresses, allows them to verify that they are who they say they are and live where they say they live or work or recreate. But that information, the private information, is not passed along uh, to the proponent of the consultation, but rather the fact that the individual has been vetted as uh, being within the relevant boundaries. So that's an important thing uh, that, again, we baked into the DNA of the platform, is to address that core concern around online privacy. Other challenges that we've experienced are you know, re revolving around the status quo. People are accustomed to doing things a certain way, especially when you're dealing with, with uh, local government. Bureaucracies uh, have uh, entrenched ways of doing things. So as we're trying to, uh, to make public participation and public consultation more accessible to everyone, we are you know, continuing to bang our heads up against the status quo and established practices. The good news is, of course, that uh, many practitioners in the field are seeing the opportunity to reach a much broader spectrum of people using online tools and, from our perspective, starting to authenticate that process into generating hard data. Finally, we are still dealing uh, with the perception of a digital divide. Um, in Vancouver, we know that 91.5% of citizens in the city are online. And groups that we would have thought would have been disenfranchised earlier, the homeless, for example, or seniors, we're actually finding that although homeless people might not have a street address, they're going to have an email address. And seniors, especially women, are the fastest group growing on Facebook. So concerns around the digital divide are becoming less relevant, but nevertheless exist. And, and I think that amplifies the need to, to uh, continue to have offline, in-person consultation, as well as online consultation to ameliorate those concerns. So what we're doing with, with PlaySpeak really represents a new model. So instead of setting up individual consultation pages or websites and expecting citizens to come and interact, we're banking or aggregating users, citizen users, into the system so that they can then be informed by multiple consultations. And um, what I, I call this the citizen-centered network effect. And, and this example here is where I am down on Kitts Point in Vancouver. I uh, drew this slide from a recent presentation to the corporate management team where I went around the table and I said, you know, uh, each one of your departments, whether it's planning, engineering, schools, parks, liquor licenses, fire department, in each and every case, you have an obligation, A, to be notifying people within a specific geographical context, and B, be receiving information back, feedback from those people in the form of consultation that is going to inform your decision-making process. And so this is really core to the thinking behind what we're trying to accomplish and what, uh, this, how this model will work. If, I, uh, if it's centered on the citizen and they can be informed, you know, you're hearing all of the time from people, I never knew about it, nobody notified me. And the, the mechanisms that we've been using, especially sending out uh, postcards in the mail, which only reach homeowners, for example, are just not being effective enough. And so this is primed to
to be reaching people digitally, since the majority of people are online, and giving it that spatial context to be able to be informed and provide feedback because of where you live. So a key part of this is the address verification. And in the early days, and PlaySpeak is, as many of you will know, a, a recent development just over the last year and a bit since we've started to uh, build the prototype and beta test and, and move forward. So we, we knew that we needed to make it easy for people to get in initially. So it, we've made it easy. You can get in with as little as an email. But then we're looking for people to um, increase their verification. And over time, we believe that it's going to be important to put more rigor around this, especially where there's local decision making going on. So an example I use is uh, in the neighborhood, if you want to have a, a traffic circle put in, right now with the engineering department in Vancouver, you need to get a two-thirds majority of people within a range of addresses that are on the property assessment rules. Right now, somebody has to download a PDF and go door to door and try and uh, get two-thirds of those owners to sign that form. Whereas, if we're able to bring this process online and be able to verify people through a variety of steps, the, uh, the whole process is, is made much more direct and accessible. So we're adding other ways to authenticate and further verify people, um, including adding property assessment roles, uh, credit cards, we'll be adding the ability for people to, to tap into their um, utility bills, like hydro, for example, to prove that, again, at least they're paying their bills at uh, the address that they say they are. As part of the privacy considerations around this, we, we have been working with the, the province of British Columbia to meet the criterion out of the, under the Freedom of Information and Personal Privacy um, Act. And clearly, it, this comes back to what I was saying about separating church from state. We're vetting this information within the PlaySpeak platform. It is kept entirely private. Uh, except for the knowledge that the proponent has. They know the name of the individual, and they know that they are within specific boundaries, but that's as far as the private personal information goes. So here's an example. Here's my personal profile. I have put in my notification settings that I want to be notified of any new consultations within a kilometer radius of my home. Uh, I can now add additional addresses like where I work or my recreational property. I can specify whether I own, rent, or manage properties. And th these are, are going to be increasingly important over time. Uh, owning a property would be important where property assessment rules come into play, as, as I touched upon earlier. So I'm going to be able to noti be notified or choose to be notified by distance or keyword. So I may say, I want to know anything about housing within a kilometer, but I might want to know about transportation within 100 kilometers. So we see the notification piece, which of course is part of the inform step of, of the IAP2 spectrum as being the starting place for this whole exercise. So here again, here's my settings. I can choose by notification distance. I can choose how I receive that notification email if it's, uh, it, as it becomes available, or I might want a weekly digest. And if I want to be notified by, in this case, keyword and location, or I might just want location, or I might just want keywords. There's flexibility on that. And we're continuing to develop and iterate around this concept. Further, uh, privacy on the public side, individuals can choose to uh, be anonymous as far as public presentation goes in, in uh, discussion forums in particular. Because we don't want, uh, if you take an unpopular position online, we don't want your neighbors coming and egging your house, for example. It's important uh, that you feel that you can be publicly confident. Um, that said, your name will be known to the proponent, and that is no different than standing up in a, in a public meeting and, and uh, being required to state your name, for example. So switching over to uh, the proponent side, we differentiate. We 
we're, we're referring to citizen users as participants, and we're re referring to the organizations that are conducting consultations as proponents. And we've broken them really into four categories or verticals uh, as we've been building and testing the platform. So even though as a geographer I started out looking at planning, I, I was looking at land use issues like rezoning and, and major development permit applications, we soon found that, again, virtually any department within government um, ha both needs to conduct consultations and needs to have a spatial context or geographical context for those consultations. So whether it was the fire department wanting to inform people in a fire hall's catchment area that there was a, a serial arsonist in the area, or a finance department wanting to do a budget consultation and be informed how opinions around the city might differ between local area neighborhoods. In each and every case, there were opportunities for using online location-based consultation. Uh, with public and regulated agencies, that's regional government, transportation authorities, uh, whether it's looking at the location of, of uh, new rapid transit system, uh, down in the ports and airports, virtually any kind of transportation organization is going to have uh, spatial consultation needs. Telecoms, there's uh, recently uh, a telecommunications tower that needs to go up, up uh, on one of the islands in the Gulf Islands and needs to be able to consult with people specifically on that island but online. That would be another example. Pipelines oil and gas business, uh, dams, again, anything where you want to be informed by the location of the participants. In the private sector, we've looked mostly at the property development industry because uh, whether it's the property developers themselves or the planners, architects, engineers, PR and communications people who work with and for them, they are, um, their objective is to get that rezoning through or to get that development permit through. And so the onus is put on them by the municipalities, by and large, to conduct consultations to inform their process. So uh, my experience sitting on the development permit board, for example, we would routinely be seeing a public delegation speaking to individual consultation, around individual consultations, but the onus would have been on the property developer to or the proponent to have a public open houses. And some of them have started to experiment with online consultation. But over time, I think this is, we're going to see local government requiring the private sector to be um, contributing to uh, online consultation as part of their reporting attached to their applications. And then finally, we're dealing with, with community groups in a variety of different forms where, uh, again, they want to be able to communicate bi-directionally with people within specific boundaries. And those boundaries can be right down to the block level, or they could go virtually as wide as you want. So uh, we're seeing business improvement associations. We've got uh, First Nations getting ready to set up with our first consultations, um, and a variety of, of different residents' associations and NGOs getting on board again, as they want to be able to, uh, to not limit per se, but, uh, but really focus their consultations within their immediate communities. So when you want to set up and create um, a, a consultation topic within PlaySpeak, you start by registering the organization. And so if you go in, uh, there's a button on the main page that says Create New Topic. And that will take you to this register your organization where you'll determine in, in local government, is it planning, engineering, housing, parts, and rent, et cetera. And that list would go down through the private sector in each of the four verticals um, that I just described. And once the, the organization is registered, you're going to be able to manage potentially multiple consultations from a single dashboard. Uh, we have set this up as a software as a service model, which we've endeavored to make uh, very uh, cost effective because our objective is really to get um, people using this and undertaking meaningful consultation online. 
So it starts off with a, a bronze package at as little as $20 a month, which is really designed for nonprofit and community organizations. That moves up to the silver and gold platform, but even at the most expensive of $5,000 a year, it's significantly below what uh, the cost of, of running other kinds of applications, and especially with its ability to bring together all of the features and uh, a growing user base. Really what varies between these is the uh, amount of human effort on our side of providing technical support. Uh, we've also been providing consulting support, but that's not what our, our game plan is in the long term. We're doing that because uh, we're, it's new and we need to educate people, but we have been supporting people, showing them how to set up their own topic pages, how to set up surveys, how to moderate. Although I must say um, that since people are self-identifying in the system, we haven't had a single troll attack and have not had the kinds of 24-7 moderation that's been required uh, in other cases where the participants have been anonymous. So once your topic's set up, as I say, you're going to be able to manage multiple consultations, uh, add multiple uh, team participants um, in, as either administrators or moderators. Uh, you're going to be able to create new topics from there and, um, un and uh, set the features that you want to use. But the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to determine who you want to be able to participate. And this is defined by your mapping, and you can say, we only want area re residents, for example, to be able to participate in discussion forums, or only people um, within an, er an area can take the surveys or pools, or we may want to open it up and say anybody can do it. But how what the decisions that you make at this stage of the game are going to affect the reporting on the other end of the spectrum. You can also limit. Um, for stakeholders, only people that are invited via email should you choose to do that. Uh, but by and large, of course, we're trying to get the largest number of people involved to participate. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to map out the area or areas geographically that you want to hear from. So this is a, an example of the city of New Westminster. Uh, with their master transportation plan, they wanted to restrict participation exclusively to New Westminster residents, but they wanted to be able to differentiate attitudes between the different local area network uh, neighborhoods. So in this case, we would have uploaded a KML file, which is available in, in most cities' open data catalogs, and a KML file is a standard GIS boundary file. That said, you can also hand draw uh, those divisions, and if you're getting into something that's you know, zooming in at the block level, obviously you're going to do that by hand versus doing it with the KML file. But we're adding different, uh, some other uh, boundary file formats as well, but currently uh, it's, we're using KMLs. You can toggle the map preview to, do, uh, to focus in the, the smaller version on the main page. And there's a bunch more bells and whistles that um, you can be using in your, uh, in your mapping. Then you're going to choose your features. And the, going back to the IAP2 spectrum, the first step is inform. So uh, you're, you've got the title of your consultation. You've got a, a short abstract, a, a Twitter-friendly 140 characters. Um, and then your description, uh, we've set this up with a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get editor. So you can cut and paste in words and pictures and videos, links, whatever, into your landing page, which is the key narrative description around your consultation. You'll put in your contact information, calendar of any events that, that you're having and that you can continue to, to keep up to date. We've built in, uh, you can plug in your Facebook and Twitter IDs or feeds. You can upload documents. You can uh, include links. and. Um, it's not mentioned here, but you, you can also be uploading photos and inputting uh, YouTube videos. All of those are built in as standard equipment to inform the participants. 
The flip side then is on the consulting, the listening side and the receiving of feedback. The discussion forums can be moderated led. Um, you're going to put in the questions and people are going to respond to that. You'll see the, uh, each one of the responses to those and people can thumbs up and thumbs down uh, on each of the comments. You can see participants' name and location, although again you will not see their private information. The notice board is a feature that's kind of like a Facebook wall which allows user-generated content to be uploaded. Uh, sometimes you may want to do idea generation and just uh, without giving a, a moderator-led kind of, of dialogue just to allow people to contribute uh, on their own and that's what the notice board is for. And again, turning these features on and off is as complicated as ticking or unticking a box. Polls are built in, uh, the sort of newspaper style ones that give you the instant results, but also surveys that are, are uh, more complex. We're currently using the Lime Survey Engine, which is an open source survey platform that many of you will be familiar with. It's scalable and, and flexible, but it does require um, some knowledge of, of surveying uh, software. So um, in the interest of making it more user friendly for people on a more consumer survey level, we're in the process of, I should have noted here, we're in the process of adding Fluid Survey and SurveyMonkey as options uh, if people are already using those platforms or have other subscriptions. But in each case they will be informed by the location divisions of the participants. So if you're, you're doing your survey, your questions are going to be down one axis and then the responses are going to be spatially segmented along the other. In terms of qualitative discussion forum stuff, we're looking at plugging in Seizu. If uh, people are not uh, familiar with Seizu, it's, it's a platform that allows you to algorithmically prioritize keywords and phrases. And uh, we're looking at being able to take RSS feeds out of discussion forums and create word clouds using that platform. Because it's important to get the word out every which way you can, we've developed um, a series of widgets and iframes and now um, an API which will allow uh, you to plug in PlaySpeak into third-party websites, so if it's a city web page or whatever, you can go into um, the admin panel and create a widget like this one, for example, that could contain um, a map of, of the city. You could also include statistics um, and help as the case may be. Um, you can plug in just simple buttons like that if you want. And with our, our API, it will now be possible for you to map out the area that you want to hear from and then ping our database to, again, location verify people. So we've just delivered this open data component um, through our API as of August and are still in early stages with it. But I'd encourage if anybody's interested in learning more about how the API works, uh, please be in touch because we're looking for some more uh, data testers on that. Integration with your existing website is important. We know that approximately a third of all of the participants are going to come through, whether it's the municipality or in this case the Vancouver School Board. Um, this is uh, the Vancouver School Door Board was doing their sectoral review process and PlaySpeak provided the Your Voice component so that people, if they went to the VSB website, could click through to PlaySpeak to the survey or the discussion forms through the parent website. Here's another example. Um, this was the North Delta Area Plan Community Goals Survey. They put an explanation on the Delta uh, Corporation of Delta website that clicked through. And in that way, they were establishing uh, primary trust with the participants before they went in. And so they. Um, we found that is, is quite important. In terms of promotion, um, we have developed um, a series of white papers on this and I can, the links are at the bottom of the presentation. They're also a, available on our blog or on Scribd. Online, um, obviously, we're Facebook and Twitter integrated and we encourage 
anyone that's doing a consultation to use their social media to maximum effect, to send out invitations to your email lists, and, and PlaySpeak is designed to plug into any one of your email clients, whether that's Outlook or, or uh, Google Mail or Yahoo or, or whatever, or if you just want to enter a CSV file. We also encourage you going out on, uh, through newsletters. Um, if you have communities that are there already, just plug in a news item about this with a link so that people uh, can be directed to the consultation. Offline, uh, we have a ser developed a series of flyer templates that we can provide to people. But basically, if you've got a public meeting, you want people to know when they go home, here's your postcard or here's your flyer, go online, take the survey, participate in the, in the uh, discussion forum there. Some people are actually now taking their, their uh, laptops or their uh, different mobile devices and, and to their public meetings and getting people to, to sign up or participate there. So there's virtually any way that you can think of reaching people. Conventional things like newspaper, most municipalities will have some a notice board within local papers, posters and community centers. The most innovative one that I saw was the District of Tofino when they did their tsunami siren test and put those little do not disturb things that you see on hotel doorknobs out to, so that people would know about uh, uh, the consultation there. So uh, the message is any way you can cross promote. Reporting and analytics, as I say, all of the data that is going to be coming back to you is going to be segmented spatially. So um, this example, which is from the Vancouver School Board, they had segmented the city into half a dozen different zones and then also allowed people outside of the city to participate because they knew they had kids coming in from outside the city. So again, as they analyzed each of the questions that were on the survey, they were able to, to uh, demonstrate how opinions were different in the different areas covered. There are real-time analytics uh, uh, demonstrated at a high level, so you can know how many unique viewers to part, how many participants, how many discussion forum questions, how many surveys completed. As a rule of thumb, there's a 10 to 1 ratio of, of lurkers, viewers, to participants. Uh, although we do find that that will go up higher, um, we'll see 20, 25, 30 percent participants if there are um, best practices are followed in connecting through a municipal website, for example. Um, the reports through the various forums um, are available at the end, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file or a PowerPoint of, of polls or discussion forums. So we are providing a variety of different kinds of reports, which you can choose from the, the administrative back end. And we'll be adding more there, as I say, um, but there's a, a fairly full complement now. Critically, at the end of the consultation, we really recommend that people, uh, the, that the proponent lets the participants know what the outcome was. A recent example, uh, we did the uh, New Westminster Master Transportation Plan. They were at odds with TransLink because TransLink had said that they were going to tear down the Patella Bridge and replace it with a six-lane bridge. And, um, New Westminster felt that they should have been consulted on that, so they took it upon themselves to put together a report, which again obtained New Westminster specific data. They, um, they passed that along to TransLink, and now TransLink has agreed, whether indirectly or directly, to, to consult with New Westminster and with Surrey on the Patullo Bridge replacement. So what New Westminster did was they pushed out a thank you to the 250 roughly people that had participated in the survey or discussion forums saying thank you for participating, you made a difference. And um, that feedback loop is critically important so that people know that they're not just signing some random petition that's going to go into a black hole, but rather are, because they're providing hard, hard defensible data uh, to uh, influencing the outcomes. 
So critically, impact on outcome in an open, accessible, dynamic, transparent, and defensible process. So I'm going to stop there, and um, I think, Marco, it's a good, it's place, a good place for me to, to stop, stop and, and ask if there's, there's any questions. questions. That, that sounds good, Colleen, and, and, and we do have a couple of questions that came in. Um, so uh, I just first of all, thanks for you know, giving us such a, such a comprehensive and informative overview. Uh, it really is a full-featured uh, system. Um, and if you don't mind, I'll just sum up quickly you know, uh, some of your key points, and please correct me if need be, but basically what you're trying to do is you're leveraging an, an increasingly preferred medium of communication. You're easing access and notifications through convenience, timeliness, and relevance while at the same time ensuring geographically authentic participation both for the participant and for proponent. And you're providing a cost-effective yet fully featured and secure environment. Uh, is, that, is that about right? Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Uh, Colleen, so a couple of questions we have is, um, one question comes from Sarah and she's asking, can you report by other demographics or just spatially by geographic uh, location? It is specifically geographic. Um, we, we do have a number of consultations going on where we are obtaining uh, demographic information through the survey. But uh, if they put us offline, if they try to talk about too much demographic information, um, then this is one of the private individuals. So what we're recommending is that we capture that demographic information, such as what we are doing uh, right now with the Urban Futures Survey, it's possible to do that for, within the body of the survey rather, the, rather than PlaySpeak as a platform. Hello? Thanks, Colleen. Uh, the other question we have here is, um, is it possible to use this tool with people who do not belong to a specific geographic area but who belong to a specific interest group, for example, fishermen? Yeah, you would use the, um, the feature that I described where you would enter email addresses. You can just put in a list of stakeholders that you want to participate. Um, but um, presumably you would still want to be informed by uh, the distribution of those people. Um, I guess I would ask, are you wanting to verify that they're fishermen? Are you wanting to verify that they're fishermen on the, on the west coast? Uh, so I suspect that there m may be a geographical component to it, but um, my point is that you can restrict that to a stakeholder group if you have uh, a list to work from. Great, thanks, Colleen. Um, we have another one um, here, just one second. Is the data uh, collected from participants summarized before feeding, feeding it back to them in terms of outcomes, or is that up to the individual organization that ran the consultation? It's up to the proponent. Um, what they can see, uh, they can see the high-level metrics, as I described, of you know, how many participants, uh, how many surveys completed. Uh, they can see the discussion forums uh, and how those are playing out, and they can see responses, for example, to the Insta polls. But uh, for, for overall reporting, and especially the long-form surveys, they have to wait until uh, that is made available by the proponent. Okay, great. Thanks, Colleen. Uh, we have another one here. Um, one. <laughs> I'm curious about hearing examples of application in northern environments. Example, northern uh, Northwest Territories, Nunavut, the Arctic in general. Thanks. Well, it was uh, the the first one in the Northwest Territories just started to set up their topic yesterday, so it's premature for me to be able to comment on that. My suspicion is that there will be issues around uh, wireless or, or internet access. Um, and that's something that we're very conscious of. We're working on developing our mobile applications. The site is, is um, mobile optimized, but we have not developed downloadable apps yet. Um, and I think, you know, as, especially as we're looking at First Nations communities in the north and, and throughout the country, um, they're, they're apt to have mobile capabilities 
even if they don't have internet access, and so that's going to become increasingly important. We um, have been up in Fort St. John in northern British Columbia. They they have been undertaking their Site C dam consultation, and um, we've seen less participation there than we have in the cities, frankly. And I'm not sure exactly why, because um, the city seems to the city of Fort St. John believes that there's uh, a fair amount of internet penetration up there, but I would have personally liked to have seen more traction. But again, very early days, it's really only been a year uh, since that we've started to make this available to different organizations, and, and we focused on incubating in the city of Vancouver and, and in the metro Vancouver area, because I like to say Vancouver is our Harvard, as, as Harvard was to Facebook. You kind of need to work out the uh, nuances of the system within a defined environment before you can spread outwards. So we are now at that point where we are spreading outwards and we're uh, very keen to, to see uptake up north, uh, back east, and central Canada. We've recently had our uh, first consultation set up in uh, a suburb of Winnipeg. The uh, East St. Paul area far lands consultation is is just beginning. This is a 500-acre subdivision that's uh, going in and out there. So it is starting to spread outwards from this area of British Columbia, and again, we're encouraging that, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to add more case studies and answer that question more effectively in the future. Thanks, Colleen. There's a, I have two more questions. You almost answered the, the, this, this next one, but uh, first of all, it comes from Brent. He's asking, how many users do you have in Vancouver? And he follows up with a uh, question, uh, are you ready, willing to move into new markets such as Toronto? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. In Vancouver, I think there's about 3,600 now um, and growing every day. And it, it, every time there's a new consultation and every time there's a, you know, an article in the paper, we see the usership jump and people are talking about it more, becoming more familiar, and, and as that happens, adoption increases. I, I was hoping to be able to show a, a time lapse of the proliferation of green dots as we describe it, as we're able to show um, how quickly uh, you can see those green dots coming on the map when there's a new consultation. For example, with New Westminster, prior to the Patullo Bridge and Master Transportation Plan, I think there might have been five green dots in, in the whole city. And then within a week, there were 250. And it, it, it grows like that, and it's really cool to watch it happen. So um, if you go on to PlaySpeak and you zoom out, you'll see that there's green dots starting to, to uh, materialize all over the globe. So we're, we're keen to, to start to plug in uh, the, the red dots, which are the consultations, so that there's something that people can actually participate in, uh, because I think it's really been the thought leaders in different areas that have been signing up. So I've seen quite a number, for example, in Toronto and Ottawa uh, and throughout the country, so keen to see more of, of uh, those areas starting to uh, experiment and get on board with some consultations, and you'll be surprised how quickly those green dots will proliferate. Thanks, Colleen. Um, can, do you have any examples of how PlaySpeak has been used with public health? Or is that something you're working on? Uh, we're talking to uh, some public health communication in Columbia, but I don't have any case studies that I can relate uh, yet. So hopefully the person that's at I'll be interesting in, in, in being a trailblazer. Um, and clean one more, and that's, so do you have a public forum on, uh, say, alpha and beta testers on how to improve PlaySpeak? Um, we've been taking that mostly uh, th just through emails and through um, our blog and Facebook and Twitter. You know, however, which way we can. We don't have a, a wiki set up, but that's a good suggestion because we are very keen. It's only through the feedback that we receive that we're able to make it better. 
we focused on uh, initially on the, the proponent side to try and get the tools to, to where they could use it. Now uh, we're going through a process where we're really focusing on the citizen user or participant side. So within the next six weeks, you're going to see some big changes um, on the, the GUI or graphical user interface, the, the, uh, the usability of uh, the user experience and the quote unquote gamification of the site. Um, what we've been looking at is how do we reward people what are, for displaying certain behaviors? If we want to reward people for becoming increasingly civically engaged, how do we do that? As influencers, we do it through connecting to more topics, participating in more surveys, inviting more neighbors. Um, these are the kinds of things that we've been discussing and how we can be improving the, the user experience, as it were. So um, we've been taking all of the feedback that we have received and continuing to develop new features and embellish on, on existing ones. I should also say we've done this literally, this is a, a startup that has been bootstrapping out of my basement for the last year. Um, we've received the support of the National Research Council IRAP program now two years in a row, both for technology validation and for our API development. And um, you know we've had a series of MyTax uh, interns and NSERC engage grants, so uh, largely grounded in both the academic uh, innovation and research and development community. So that's been really helpful for us to get the platform to where it is today, but for it to, to really take off across the country and, and uh, rise to the, the occasion and opportunity, it is going to really benefit from the feedback of practitioners in the field. So, uh, Colleen, uh, we're, uh, we're, it's 10.48 right now. We have uh, a couple of more questions, um, and uh, so I know you have a couple more case studies to go through. Uh, do you want to uh, jump uh, into the case studies, or did you want to answer the questions? Let me answer the question, and I'll answer All right. Uh, so, uh, next question is, uh, you referred to the I International Association for Public Participation, IP2. Are you a member of IP2, and have you been using IP2 to collaborate with other members about PlaySpeak? Yes, I am a member, um, and... I have been, I guess it was last year's inaugural AGM out in Toronto, I, I presented via Skype where we were at, the, at that point. Sadly, I'm not in uh, Halifax now, but uh, you know, I regularly attend events and, and uh, we're talking to other members on a regular basis and, and again, Keen, this is an open door invitation, please, to IAP2 members to engage further. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, Delaney and Associates, we're our AP2 members, so, so that there's an example of, of that collaboration right there. Um, next question is, um, how are those green dots georeferenced, uh, and then brackets, accuracy issues? Well, we, if, you, if you zoom in real close, you'll see that those green dots go down the middle of the street, not on property because we don't want to create a stalker machine. We don't want people to uh, be reverse engineering and trying to, do, to figure out, you know, who's what. So within, there, there's a certain amount of ob obscurvation, <laughs> I can't pronounce it myself this morning, we're, we're trying to obviate the position but keep it within uh, as close proximity as possible without putting it right on the property. Because uh, uh, because of our privacy issues. Thanks, Colleen. And the last one is uh, people can often experience consultation fatigue. Do you have any recommendations to organizations who want to consult in locations where there may be a lot of consultations already taking place? Also, is there currently any link between PlaySpeak and other consultations that may be taking place in the area? Uh, well, PlaySpeak is connected. Uh, virtually every consultation that is on PlaySpeak is tied to another web uh, website or or consultation process. 
New Westminster, which I was going to talk further about, they had a public meeting about the Patella Bridge. They had about 300 people show up, which was pretty good. They had the questionnaire on site and had about 30 people, or about 10%, complete that questionnaire on the spot. At the same time, we could see from our analytics that we had about 1,000 people, so different people than that showed up at the public meeting, that visited the online open house. And of those, we had about 200 complete the questionnaire survey. So we knew that we were meeting our requirements of, of reaching a broader spectrum of people. It was part of an overall strategy which included both online and offline uh, applications. At the end of the day, um, the survey data that we got was of, of better quality and required less staff time, frankly, because staff had to take the, the handwritten surveys and then put them on an Excel spreadsheet and code them. Um, so as an overall strategy, it was tied to what the city was trying to accomplish, but they, in their wisdom, you know, saw the ability of tying the, the two together. Another example would be the Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge Shopping Center in Vancouver. The developer held um, a couple of different public open houses, and we did simultaneous virtual open houses online. Again, um, our analytics showed us that we were seeing a, much, a, a lot more people online within the same period of time. Um, but that said, um, the, the survey data, we got many more surveys in the first open house than we did in the second open house. And that was under the umbrella of the developer. But now that particular development is at the application stage. And so uh, the administrative controls of the online consultation will now be shifted to the city's planning and consultation staff and become part of their process. So I use that to illustrate the fact that it, it is integrated and then it changes over time. It, it iterates depending on who is conducting the consultation and how the data is being used at the end of the day. And hopefully I answered that question. That's great, Queen. So uh, we don't have any uh, other questions at this time. Uh, so if you wanted to, uh, I guess, wrap up the uh, the presentation uh, with uh, some of the the case studies that you that you prepared, uh, that would be that would be great. Thanks. Well, what I thought I would do is uh, play you this this quick video, which is uh, from the mayor. So it was representative of the politician, the city uh, transportation engineer, and the corporate communications person. And I'll let them put it in their own words. Hopefully this works. Well, I talked to my staff after uh, we received the information, and my question is, that, uh, is this legitimate? Do we know that it's coming from with uh, sincerity and, and with knowledge? And the fact was, yes. I was just surprised by the sheer number of people who logged on and took a look. We covered a lot more bases this way. It eliminates those anonymous comments. It forces residents and users to to own their words. Facebook got a very uh, unique position for us to be able to get to the people and then go back to them. We are the center of the Lower Mainland, and the roads all come through, just like Rome. All roads go through New Westminster. <laughs> Traffic is our number one situation problem, the things that we're trying to fix up for the citizens, as well as the region. Uh, with the coming of the New Patella Bridge and with opening of the uh, New Port Man Bridge, um, it's even more important as we look at the transportation system. That's a, a long-range transportation plan. It guides the decision-making process for transport, that's walking, cycling, motor vehicles, trucks, transit for the next 25 years and more. We also took the opportunity um, to consult people on TransLink's project to replace the Patella Bridge with a new six-lane bridge. So we did the master transportation plan and the Patella Bridge at the same time. We uh, needed to get as much input as we possibly could from the people to know what their thoughts were and what their inputs might be or what their fears might be. And uh, at the end of the day, to go back with the uh, colleagues and with the translate people to discuss where we're going. Often you can be influenced by a small group of people, but is that truly representing 
feedback we got on the master transportation plan is we were asking questions about the visions and goals, how the people, what, what people would like the city to look like in 25 years. We'll check back with them. We're, we think we're on the right line. With Patella Bridge, it seems people aren't too worried about that. About that. Hi, Queen. I think we're having some issues with the sound. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so maybe we do. You, do we, maybe I suggest that we can send the link to the video uh, after the presentation, so okay. that uh, participants can uh, view it directly. If that's okay with you, I, th I think there, there's some difficulties in terms of hearing the sound over the phone and a bit of a delay. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. No worries. Thanks. It's worth a try anyway. Right. Well. well um, the long, the long and the short of it was that the, the U.S. Uh, was, was rape, rape cases. Case. And yeah. um, subsequently, U.S. Westminster has now had a budget uh, 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 consultation and survey because they're now able to go back to the people in New Westminster uh, that they've already connected with and uh, also build on that as, as uh, the corporate communications people have continued to go out through their various list serves and, and uh, again, using social media in every which way they can to continue to build their base within uh, New Westminster. So we're, we're happy when we see that uh, because it, it means that it's working, they're getting the value of it, and it's, again, making it possible to keep people notified online uh, according to their own preferences of relevant things within their local area. Thanks, Colleen. Did you, did you want to do another one or? Uh, uh, covered it. I mean, we Island test on in Tofino where they wanted to know whether people in different areas of the of the Tofino Peninsula could could hear the siren and if so how loud was it would they have heard if they were sleeping that that was a an application of PlaySpeak that I never would have even imagined um, and so we continue to be surprised um, at the kinds of applications of this platform and the software. Of, of different kinds of consultations, and so we're hoping that we will see more and different ones spreading across the country as as the year goes on. That's great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, I, if, so, if anyone has any other questions, please do type them in now, or feel free to raise your hand uh, via the control panel, and uh, I'll un unmute you at that point, and you can ask your questions uh, using the audio feature. So um, I'll give you guys a minute, and so if you want to type it down, that, that would be fantastic. If, if there's no other questions, we'll wrap the session up. And uh, I just want to thank you for participating again uh, in our webinar. Uh, this is our third webinar. We're, we're going to continue this uh, webinar series as part of our community of practice. We're brainstorming our next uh, webinar session and trying to come up with an with a appropriate topic. And if you have any ideas, please do enter them in our post-webinar survey that we'll send out uh, sometime tomorrow. Um, so I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, Colleen, uh, do you have any, any comments as to, as to any, some of the challenges that you've encountered in the past uh, you know, and, and that you wanted to maybe touch upon? For the indiv individual participant, um, the technology challenges I think are, are just a matter in our case of, of resources because we've been doing this as, as I say on a, on a bootstrapping basis. We do come up against the status quo. We find uh, as a rule that there, even though people give a lot of lip service to public consultation, that's what it is, lip service. They really don't, uh, they've, they've made up their minds about what the outcome is going to be and they don't want to hear from the people. And that's a, that's a larger concern for practitioners in this area that's not limited to our experience with play uh, We've We've gone out and we've tried to um, through writing white papers and, and uh, other documents, make recommendations on how to best use this tool and online consultation generally. 
but you can lead a horse to water. And so I would say the status quo is probably as big a problem as uh, privacy has been. But um, like anything, whenever you're innovating, there's always a, a learning curve. And we've gone from the, the innovator to the early adopter stage now. And using that crossing the chasm or tipping point metaphor, we're, um, we're hoping now that you know, as we can progress beyond the early adopter stage, that we'll be able to have this more uniformly uh, deployed across the country. Thanks, Glenn. That's, that's a great way to, uh, to wrap up the, today's discussion. Uh, I want to congratulate you on, on a wonderful platform that you've built and you've come a long way and, and are continuing uh, evolving the system and, and improving the features. So um, kudos to you and your team. Uh, and thank you again for being here today with us. Uh, and we look forward to uh, any future you know, collaborations. And, uh, and if anyone has any questions, uh, Colleen's details are posted here on the screen. Uh, the website is at, at www.playspeak.com. Send them an email. Um, and if you want to follow up uh, with us uh, as to anything else, uh, you can find us at www.rmdelaney.com. Um, thank you again for participating, and we look forward to having you join us in the future. Thanks.